Hey there, watch enthusiasts. Welcome back to Base Watches, your go-to channel for all things horology. Today, we're tackling a big question. How do you build the ultimate watch collection with a $14,500 budget? We created a list of the top five watches that offer style, sophistication, and value for your money. Whether you're just starting your collection or looking to add some stellar pieces, we got something for you. So let's dive in and see how you can get the most out of your budget. Let's start by looking at the case. Just like the original Dove 10, the Pilot Pioneer has a tonio and cushion-shaped case with a brushed finish. The brushing keeps the watch looking toolish, but it also looks more refined than the bead blasting seen on the Khaki Field Mechanical. The size of the case is a modest 36 mm with a lug to lug of 41 mm and a thickness of 10 mm. This is pretty much the same size as the original Hamilton W10, and I'm glad to see Hamilton resisted the urge to upscale the watch for a modern audience. I find that the watch is pretty true to these dimensions as well. However, it's the dial that really demonstrates just how much of a step up the Pilot Pioneer is over the KFM. Whilst the dial of the KFN is flat and functional, the dial of the Pilot Pioneer is packed with different finishes that draw the eye from one spot to another. For starters, the dial itself has a sandpaper-like finish to it. It's subtle but it imparts just enough texture to prevent the dial from being dull. Just like the khaki feel mechanical, the Pilot Pioneer uses Hamilton's H50 movement. It's essentially a modified ETA 2801, and it has 17 joules, a 3 Hz beat rate and an impressive 80-hour power reserve. In conclusion, the Hamilton Khaki Aviation Pilot Pioneer Mechanical is a fitting tribute to the brand's heritage in aviation timekeeping. The Baltic Aquasca GMT is, like its older sibling, a 200-meter automatic, vintage-style diver's watch with a dome sapphire crystal and a familiar skin diver meets 50 fathoms case shape. However, where previous updates consisted of different dial colors, bezel inserts, or case materials, the Aquasca GMT is, and you might see this coming, equipped with a second time zone function enabled by the Swiss Suprad C125 as well as a bidirectional sapphire loomed bezel. Part of what endeared the original Aquascifi to the masses was its case shape and size. At a very reasonable 39mm in width and only 47mm lug to lug, the Aquascape GMT is virtually the same as the original and wears well on all but perhaps the very largest wrists, presenting a vintage profile also aided by an excellent vintage style, dome sapphire crystal, which still only brings the piece to a modest 12mm thickness. And indeed the primary reason for the substantial upcharge is the inclusion of a Swiss-made GMT caliber in the form of the Suprad C125 powering the Aquascape GMT. For those who aren't familiar, Suprad is part of the Festina group and one of a few movement manufacturers, also including Salida, that is providing brands an alternative to the previously near-ubiquitous ETA, a subsidiary of the world-dominating Swatch group. For the ocean-going traveler, the Ahuasca GMT is one of the most attractive options out there for a GMT diver, and it feels worth the somewhat higher price compared to the standard model. For a microbrand that keeps creating desirable watches for an ever-growing fanbase, this piece is yet another step in the right direction. Grand Seiko did not incorporate a chronograph into their collection until 2007, and it took another 16 years for them to showcase their first mechanical chronograph but the wait was well worth it. The name South City GC001 Tentagriff relates to the fact that its 9SC5 movement has T and beats per second, a 3-day power reserve, and is an automatic chrono Dura APA. The Grand Seiko Tentagriff is a sizable watch, measuring a substantial 43.2 mm in diameter and 15.3 mm in thickness. Most mechanical watches of this profile are top-heavy on the wrist, which isn't a good thing. Fortunately, the Tentagriff isn't like most watches. The watch is crafted in lightweight titanium which is 30% more scratch-resistant and, importantly, lighter than stainless steel. This helps to bring down the weight of the watch head. For added comfort and security, the lugs are gently curved to fit the contours of the wrist. The case is also fitted with a scratch-resistant black ceramic bezel with a tachymeter scale, a popular design for sports chronographs these days. To round things off nicely, the case is matched with a titanium bracelet with a three-fold clasp. Driving the Grand Seiko Tentagriff is the new 60 Joule Caliber 9 SC5. The movement is based on the 2020 Caliber 9 SA5 that was first fitted with the Dual Impulse Escapement, an in-house developed escapement with greater efficiency than the classic lever escapement. As they say, better late than never. Grand Seiko's long overdue foray into the world of mechanical chronograph watches was well worth the wait. 
The Seiko Prospect's King Turtle is a modern reinterpretation of Seiko's iconic turtle diver's watch, celebrated for its durability, reliability, and distinctive design. The case of the Seiko Prospect's SRP-05 is crafted from stainless steel and boasts a robust yet ergonomic design inspired by the shell of a turtle. With a diameter of 45 mm, the case offers a substantial presence on the wrist without feeling overly bulky. The distinctive cushion-shaped profile combined with angular lugs and a prominent crown guard gives the watch its characteristic turtle nickname. The case is finished with a combination of brushed and polished surfaces, enhancing its sporty yet sophisticated appearance. With a water resistance rating of 200 meters, the SAS RP E05 is well equipped for underwater adventures while maintaining a stylish aesthetic suitable for everyday wear. Powering the Seiko Prospects is the robust and reliable caliber 4R36 automatic movement. Operating at a frequency of 21,600 vibrations per hour, the 4R36 movement offers precise timekeeping and a power reserve of approximately 41 hours. In conclusion, the Seiko Prospects King Turtle is a formidable diver's watch that combines rugged durability, practical functionality, and stylish design. The Oris Diver's 65 watch has a vintage look and feel that many people find charming. Despite being a modern watch built to modern standards, it has a certain old-school quirkiness that sets it apart. When I first saw it, I had mixed feelings, but I was immediately struck by how comfortable it felt on my wrist. With three different sizes available, it's easy to find a Diver 65 that suits your personal preferences and wrist size. One of the stand-up features of the Diver 65 is its case design. Although it may seem simple at first glance, Oris did an excellent job with the proportions, resulting in a watch that is comfortable to wear in the real world. Unlike many bulky dive watches, the Diver 65 has a low-profile design that conforms nicely to the natural curvature of most wrists. Additionally, the mid-case is remarkably thin, making it sit very flat on the wrist. The stainless steel bezel with a black aluminum insert is somewhat standard, and the grip provided by the bezel teeth is adequate even when the watch is wet. The unidirectional 120-click action is relatively positive, with minimal backplay. Inside the case is the Oris Caliber 733, which is essentially a Celita Southwest 200 automatic movement with an Oris Red winding rotor. If you're considering buying a Diver 65, you'll need to think about what kind of experience you want from your watch. This is a modern timepiece that looks and feels like a vintage watch from an independent, historic Swiss brand. 